All right, we have the CV axle boot right here. Just came in from Tusk. Bought this off of eBay. 25 bucks for just the boot and the clamps. We've got the CV axle out here. That boot is fine, that's the inner boot. This is the outer boot. And uh, I actually had to look up the product number for that because apparently they're different than like the 2014 and 15. So here are the clamps for it. I don't know how that one's supposed to fit on there. <laughs> looks a little small. So I think they sent me the wrong clamp. This one looks fine. That clamps around there. But um, in order to get this one on, you've got to take this one off and then slide this one on and then clamp both of those. All right, we're just gonna pack this thing full of grease. That's a perfect fit. Then we've got to run to the hardware store. I figured out the clamp. We've got to get a tool that can crimp that onto there. So that's the next part. All right, so I got this one tightened down. And now there's really no special tool, I don't think, that you can use for it. So what I'm doing is because you can't really just pull it straight with the pliers like this. You're not gonna get it tight enough to see how it's moving like that. So what you wanna do, is what I do at least, is put this little stopper right here. Grab this. You're gonna start to rotate this around like this. And you're gonna put the stopper in there. And what this is gonna do, just tighten her up. See how it's getting tight? And just bend this whole thing over. And lock that in place. See, that's way tight now. That's not moving. Now I can pivot. That won't move, and we're gonna be good to go. There we go. So that one's all good to go. Nice and tight, that's all fixed. It's not coming off. All right, we got the CV axle in. That's all in. Now we've gotta get part of the frame here into this position. Which is a little bit tricky. Knock this out a little bit. This rod as well. That one has to go in here as well. So we'll come back once these are both in, and then I'll show you guys the rest of the way. Now a cotter pin has to go in here, because we don't want that coming off, that would be horrible. All right, finally found that hole for the cotter pin. Gently tapping that in. Okay. 
that one's done. All right, back wheel is all back on. You can see that is fixed. Good to go. So now we've got brakes to do yet. So the brakes are coming tomorrow. Brake lines are coming tomorrow. That's gonna be a big job. And then I wanna get this winch on the front too and find a plow for this machine. So I think we're going to put it underneath this cover, do a little research and just see where most people put this. I'm guessing you have to make like a mounting plate for it. Or try to find some bolt holes that we can mount this thing to. But uh, we'll have to mount that and then get these wires routed and then uh, get this mounted as well so we can control this thing. It's the next day. The brakes are gonna be here in a couple hours, so let's start tearing down the center of this thing. I believe the brakes are going below the panel right here. And then they go underneath here and go into a T. You can kind of see it back here, those brake lines. Kind of hard to see. But yeah, we're all right there. You can see they go into a T and branch off to the left and right. So it comes in one here to a T, branches off. And it looks like it goes underneath everything. Then goes up here to the master cylinder up here. And you can see it winds down below here, dips down below. So it's just a pain. I don't know why they made them where you have one big unit like that. It's just a pain to change everything out. So there's wires all throughout this whole thing. The thing doesn't come out all the way. So you're stuck with just kind of getting your hands in between tight spaces, which is really fun. Um, but here is the brake line right here. So you see it was attached to here. There's a three-way T. This one goes to the right, that one goes to the left. And then the middle one goes down to the master cylinder, or up, I should say, to the front of the machine for the master cylinder. So we got that disconnected. And then coming down over here, these were all clamped on to the bar right up here. You can see where the clamps were. So those are all like that. And then zip ties to the bars down there so it doesn't get pinched between the suspension. But these we need to drain and get off of the calipers here. We gotta get that off, disconnect that, drain that out. This one's already drained because it was cut. So we'll drain this one out too. But same thing with this side. And then what we're gonna do is pull them up through this spot right here, pull it up through that T, and then we gotta fish the whole thing through this, <laughs> which is gonna be fun. And then out through here, and then up to the brake master cylinder. So, a little bit tricky. And then the, the one on the back, towards the back, is the rear. So this line's going to the rear right here. And it got all these loose as well. So the whole thing should pull right through. But it's just a pain to route that thing. But yeah, we're coming along. It's just a tricky process trying to get it through. All right, brake lines are out. You can see the right one is the one that was uh, kinked and leaking. So that means you had to replace the whole thing. You'd think they'd make a T that would, uh, that you'd be able to T into without taking off every single line. But it doesn't look like they'll screw out or anything, so. That's unfortunate. But yeah, here is where it connects to the master cylinder. So the new one should be here in a little bit. All right, so this just came in the mail. Let's see if this is the right one. It was off of eBay, so we'll see. Um, I messaged a guy asking if it would work, and he said yes, so we'll see about it. If not, we'll have to wait another week or so to get new parts. Oh, so these are individual. That's interesting. So that way, if we break another one, we can order up a separate one, I'm guessing. So that's the way they should have designed it from the start. See how that tees into 
But one. And maybe these do come off. These might actually come off. Let's let's just see. That'd be interesting. I wonder if I tore all that down for nothing. Did we spin off of here? I think they might. Oh. I don't know. No, they don't. Yeah, okay, so those are permanently on there. They spin, but they don't come off. Okay, that makes me feel better. <laughs> I thought they were gonna come off and I would have wasted all that time. So let's just see if they're the same length. So they're a little bit longer. We'll have to kind of make sure that um, we don't kink this one. But like I said before, at least now we can change out one of them. We don't have to take off the whole thing if one fails, which is really nice. So this is streamline brakes and controls. And these are kind of like thicker lines as well. Again, this is off of eBay. Let's see if this line's longer. Or just as long. Okay, that one's perfect. That one is perfect. Oh, you know what? These lines aren't longer. I just had uh, I just had that one piece cut off. So these are actually perfect. So, for the right length. Everything's good to go. As you can see, it's just teasing to here. These little caps come off. And the left and right side can just get tightened down like that. And that's how they should have designed it from the factory. So. We'll get these lines routed. Everything on and we should be good to go. All right, we've got the brake line coming up through here, and we're adding the uh, the left side one right now. So as you can see, it tees into here, and we just wanna tighten this one up really nice and tight so it doesn't leak without damaging anything. So we're just gonna crank on that a little bit. Crank on this one a little bit. <laughs> we really don't want that coming off. Left one is on, and then we do the same thing for the right. And then loop that down and connect it to the caliper down here. So right in here, we can fish this thing through. Goes above here like this. We have a new banjo bolt right here. What's going on? Just do that. And it goes underneath the nipple. So it's gonna go, oh, actually I think it goes above. I think it goes above the nipple. Yeah, it does. Pretty sure. I think it kinda has to, right? Does it go below? Let's try it below the nipple. I think it goes above. I don't know if it could go below. Yeah, I think it goes above. Pretty sure. We'll leave it above for now. 
But uh, then we have to get all the clamps on, clamp that down, and then we gotta bleed them yet. So, lots to do, but we'll get the right side on next. All right, so this took about two hours to do, but we got all the brakes rerouted. Looking good. Looking really good. And up in the front. All back together up there. And check this out. Brakes are working, all blood. So I'm gonna quick take this thing for test drive. See if it breaks nice and uh, if that holds. But uh, we got everything back together in the center. Looking good. So, yeah, that was a pretty big job. All right, brakes are working good on this thing. No leaking anywhere from the brakes. So those are fixed and everything is good to go. So that feels good. <laughs> now I wanna quick do an oil change on this thing. I don't know when the last oil change was, so I figured let's quick do that oil change and get that figured out. Let's quick check the oil here. So it's gonna be hot right now. This looks like it's pretty normal. There's not much in there right now. Looking like it's getting pretty black though. I believe the drain plug is right where that hole is right there. All right, it's gonna probably be hard for you guys to see, but we're using a 19 millimeter going underneath there where I showed you guys. Here, draining in there. Doesn't look horrible. I believe this takes 2.54 quarts. That's what it calls for. So we'll get the oil filter out next. But we'll check out that oil, make sure there's no chunks in there. All right, she was pretty black. That uh, looks pretty black to me. Let's see if there's any chunks in there. Uh, looks like it might be chunk free. That's good. We gotta get the filter out yet, but just wanted to check for chunks. It looks like we're gonna be good. So no chunks or anything. No metallic flakes. You can see it's right. See it right there. All right, so filters out of it. As you can see, it's an Articat one, which I was hoping it wasn't. Um, so that's like the factory one. So I'm guessing it wasn't changed uh, <laughs> anytime recently, unless they just reused the filter, um, which most likely is what happened. But the oil was pretty black, so I wouldn't be surprised. There's only a thousand something miles on it, so there's not too many miles which is good. But we're gonna get a new filter because that one's probably never been changed unless at the dealership when they first bought this thing they gave them the filter and oil for the first oil change which I think you're supposed to do after like 200 miles or something. And maybe that's when they did it. I don't know. But it's a good thing we're changing it out before 
it gets too bad. All right, just went to the hardware store, got a brand new filter, Wix filter. That's the only one that was compatible. So we'll try that guy out. Put a little oil on the surface right here and uh, then we'll reinstall that. All right, new filters in there. Let's get some oil poured in here. 2.5 quarts. So we're gonna add and then we'll check it with the dipstick. See where we're at. It's gonna like that fresh oil in there after not being changed for a while. Run for a little bit. All right, just checked it. It's just right below the fill mark. So we're good there. All right, this thing's all ready to rock and roll. Everything is fixed on it, so now we can go ride it and enjoy it. <laughs> Check it out, guys. The first snow. Oh, yeah. You know what that means? We're doing some drifting with the side-by-side -side for sure. Oh, that's going to be fun. That is going to be fun. Then we can do some plowing, too. Sweet. All right, made it to the land here. It's pretty snowy. It's continuing to snow. So we should get quite a bit here. We might have to get a snowmobile now. What the heck? This came on suddenly. <laughs> so hopefully this thing can go through the snow. We will find out today. Oh man, she is a snowy one today. How this thing survived the ride. Oh, pretty good. It's all slushy. <laughs> That's why you have these things. Alright, let's get the beast unloaded. It's all fixed up from yesterday. So we should be good to go. We will see. Kinda of missed my ramps there. <laughs> All right, let's see what she can do in the snow here.
now now that the 4x4 is working, <laughs> you can see the front wheels spinning on camera. So that's awesome. Things pretty good in the snow so far. We'll see though. We'll take it down this path. See if we can get stuck. This would where this would be where the winch would come in handy here. Wipe off my windshield here. Warm up a little bit. I can see how these uh, make some big ruts in the trails. You could flip this thing easy today, but especially going 50 miles an hour. We'll take her on a four wheel drive. This is pretty fun. <laughs> Thank you.
hitting 50 in the snow. That's pretty good. Uh oh. Something happened. Huh. Not turning back on. Wonder if something got wet. What the heck? Just shut off. Look at that. What the heck? That's really weird, isn't it? It did that once before, too. I think something's getting wet. Oh, that sucks. What the heck? Let's see if the CV axles are holding up. <laughs> Something in the comments that this thing isn't meant for drifting. Well, we are drifting today. I know that. Huh. Well, look at this. No power whatsoever going to this thing. What the heck is going on? I didn't bring my tools either. That is not good. That is not good at all. I completely forgot my tools. <laughs> so worse comes to worse, I have to drive back home and get them. All right, we got stranded out there, you can see. I'm way out there. We're stranded. And of course, the one day I forgot to bring my tools is the day I need them. So, we're heading home. We're gonna go grab the tools, come back. Um, I think a fuse keeps on blowing in the fuse box. Uh, it's basically melted in the fuse box, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Very, very strange. We'll have to diagnose it and see what's going on, but yeah, um, all the plastic's melted and I need tools to get that fuse out, so back home we head. All right, we just took the trailer back home and got all my tools. Um, <laughs> the trailer wouldn't go up the driveway, so my whole truck came sliding down the driveway into my yard. I couldn't get out of the yard, so it took me about an hour to get out because um, I couldn't detach the trailer because the trailer was the other way. So that was a pain in the butt, but we finally got this thing fixed. So it ended up being the main fuse in here that connects to the ignition, and it wasn't even turning on without it. So I think I got it fixed. You can sometimes hear it clicking. And see it sometimes doesn't turn off now. So there's, yeah, hear that click? Oh, there it turns off. So there's definitely like a ground issue happening with this thing. I think it's, you can hear that click. I think it's in the fuse box, so I'll have to mess around with those um, a little bit later, but let's go take this thing for a little ride and uh, see if we can get it stuck.
right, this thing is just a monster. I'm going hard on this thing, doing donuts, just drifting this thing hard, and it's not breaking. So it's holding up today, besides the one uh, electrical issue, but other than that, she's a beast. Thing is awesome. CV axles are holding up. Everything's good. This thing has front diff lock too. Tested that out, that works. Just really, really cool. Stay tuned for next video. I think we're gonna get a winch and a plow for it and uh, test that out. So anyway guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video. And until next time, we are out. Thank you.